writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. <sighs> it's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the Dark Presence before it attacked me. to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various Earth. symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's so okay, Alan. Just let go. Go, 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 go. I felt groggy. Wow. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. That was I not like how was I anticipated this episode Someone starting, guys. Television. Couldn't think. Hello, everybody. I'm Iron Man Mark 7, and thank you so much for tuning into this video of Alan Wake. We are starting off in game episode number four. I believe this one is called The Truth. So hopefully we will get some answers today. But before we get too far into this episode, guys, if you like it, be sure to hit that like button down below. Evening, and if you're at all new to my channel, consider now? subscribing Calm. and yeah. we'll happily you welcome you oh, yeah. into the fold. So sure, of I get the message viewers. loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit. You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. That's Dr. Hartman. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, that is that is very big. Come with me. We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. Okay. Um, so yeah, for those of you that don't remember, that is Dr. Hartman. Kind of confused what I'm doing here, but, uh, Dr. Hartman, we have met him once before, actually met him at the police station. Uh, that is why he has that band-aid on his nose, because we punched him in the face and quite enjoyed it while we were doing it. Um, it seems we're at his clinic now, uh, or... I guess the better name for it is Mental Asylum. So, yeah, we're we're in a mental asylum. Cool. Um, mental Asylum with Xbox 360 and a copy of Night Springs. Although I pity the person who has to play it on that tiny little TV. That sounds like torture. Maybe that's why we're in a mental asylum. Anyway, um, not really sure what in the world we're doing here. So, uh, another thing is, Dr. Hartman is actually one of the reasons that we're here in Bright Falls to begin with, because Alice had this ulterior motive for us to, to come and talk with Dr. Hartman and hopefully get our creative juices flowing so we could write some more books, which was very nice of her, honestly. She's just concerned this for us, but... Most of them aren't here I don't right like now. Dr. Hartman. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. I just don't. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I'm sure I you do. I specialize in treating artists. And I'm sure any art they produce, you take and sell for your own profit. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not gonna happen. This way, Alan. Oh, come on. I want to go in that room. I can go in all the others, but I can't go in that one. Ooh. Anderson Brothers! The Anderson Brothers live here. That's right. I forgot about them. They are the two old guys that we met in the diner when we first arrived at Bright Falls. They're cool guys. Hopefully we'll get to meet them while we're here. 
All right, let's go in the elevator. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No, she no. isn't. You're in a very vulnerable state. I don't believe that. understand and accept this. Well, Alice I'm going to be in a vulnerable state then. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about <laughs> Unusual life. thinking. That's very a, feeling that a very medical term. You, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. Oh. You seem to know a lot about this. We go this way, Alan. For me I having just met you. Shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. That's how drugs work. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic no, by not nature, really. Alan. We both know this. And I'll explain why. Be explained logically. He, he has a good point. Alan is very much so a skeptic. He made a comment a few episodes back about uh, Stephen King and uh, how he kind of saw Stephen King's writings, uh, all the monsters and such that happened to be in Stephen King's writings were all manifestations of a person's darkest fears. However, uh, I don't think Alan is the kind of person that would be susceptible to that. Yes, he has an imagination. But he uses it as a tool to express himself, not as a tool to cope with loss or trauma. You know, it's it's one of those situations where I think Alan is a writer and he comes up with crazy stories. But in a way that kind of grants him an immunity to those crazy stories he realizes them for what they are just stories something to tell a reader to uh to give them some form of entertainment or or a scare factor or whatever but he he's not susceptible to that at least i that's that's my reasoning anyway very nice sundial apparently it's got a quote from thomas zane on there because he seems to just be popping up everywhere here lately. Ah, I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? It is. Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. Yep, there it is. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. I have no now idea where that's at. Waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. No. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Hmm. Alan, what I'm telling you is good. Maybe news. it's not a natural now storm. You ever think about Every that? Maybe the relapse, forces of more darkness more are coming for me. From the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination uh -huh. is what you work with. After yeah, but all, it's not what I'm susceptible to. an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? Because it's you're very lying. It's natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. All, Hartman obviously loved his own voice. He does. He really does. Inside my head. But I like, he talks non-stop, and hands. it's all you gibberish. With me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Why do you lock all the doors? Come along. Let's go inside. Well, what am I saying? You run a mental hospital. Of course you lock the doors. Come on, come on. Oh, there's a guy over there. 
Uh, here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. Scary, <laughs> you were impressed scary, by my scary. trophies. Oh, yes, arrived. you are. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors. <laughs> man what the heck kind of noise was that? <laughs> Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I got you. Oh boy, did you get me. Good. I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please. I feel like that's foreshadowing. We're probably going to run into him in the night now. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Mm. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. Emerson. <laughs> We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He oh. works on video Elbow games. Strike. <gasps> it's trash, oh, no. Course, but it does involve I'll some stuff. Not video games. Which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. <laughs> I love how every video game developer feels the need to bash on their own profession. Beautiful. She just switched tunes. She must be a crazy lady. The guy likes posters of his own face. Okay, where are we going now? Hmm. Another locked door. You might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. Ooh. As soon as you feel Welcome to, to the Cauldron Lake game. Lodge. We're here to give you the specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask friends and family to schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy and or periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patients' need for privacy and personal space. Talking to you, Emerson especially when they're engaged by their creative processes. Be patient. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems, and they won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement therapy and its sister method, the flow, work best when you are actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to voice them. I do. I have one concern. The part about me voluntarily receiving treatment. Don't think that's the case. Um, so, yes, very concerned. Hmm. There's the Anderson brothers. One of them has a squeaky hammer. <laughs> I My love it. Killing me. There's a storm coming. There's oh, thunder. What a that's storm. what you're hearing. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And yeah. these two the lodge is the nice. Anderson brothers. Not a huge fan of the people in it, but the, the lodge is nice. How should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. Not they a big fan of the old first names to uh, Gods of Asgard, are you? Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. Aww. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. Oh. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Mm. Don't you think? No. No, I don't. I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. No, I would love that if it was a squeaky hammer. Secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah. Rock and roll. Fireman, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest yeah. thing I've heard in a while. Thank you, Alan. You just took the words right out of my mouth. Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson They farm. think I'm Thomas Zane? Valhalla! We wrote it all down. 
best way to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it. No, no, don't touch it, Alan. <laughs> that gave him a rash. You don't want to touch that. <laughs> My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me. <laughs> Why did you touch it? Everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? No. Nope. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our mm. own formula. Local ingredients. Medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember like moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just they they got booze at the farm. That's all the more reason to go. Us. That's not very rock and roll. Yep. Tom just lost is all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all. Taken from Aww. all of us. I feel bad leaving him. The witch. And my ravens. What was it? All right. Ooh. What were they? Memory and thought. There's another TV in there. Are we going to see a TV show? Yeah. Good thing he's not overreacting or anything. Hmm. Well, he's the boss. I may need a hand here later on, Birch. The storm's bound to make you know who jumpy. You know. No, I that. don't. Gotcha. The docs who? got me looking after Wake here, but holler if they get too rowdy. I'll do that, Birch. Hey, Wake. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. Why does you everybody to want room, me to write? Those stairs, Wake. Really? It says patient rooms there. Are you sure? I don't want to go to the wrong spot. <laughs> Oh. Something's wrong. TV. Myself, it's hard to think. There's a shadow inside oh, my head. What's going on here? I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days. You're creeping me out, Alan. Always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't well, think I'm yeah. any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. Did you guys see that though? Right, right before he said the part about the hole in her heart, he said something about shadows clinging to her, and then shadows started drifting off of Alan. Is he going to become, like, the lady? Some creepy darkness manifestation? Oh, goodness. Okay. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me okay. like a hawk. There's nothing I can do in there. This is a nice room. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. Ouch. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Something's happening. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm going to go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? Be cool. Sounds like the Andersons are uh, providing a distraction. Chance of getting out of here. Oh no, they have a hammer. Oh dang, they knocked out the nurse. The crazy old fart hit her hard. If she was one of Hartman's goons, she had it coming. I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. I had to get to Hartman's office. Okay, we have a key now. All my manuscript pages. That's where he'd be keeping them. Oh dang, they trapped Birch in the staff room. Good job, guys. Face the music, Birch. It's time to pay the piper. Good, good job. All right, let's go in the office wing. All right. Oh. I think this is his office. 
lots of creepy paintings. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made of the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. You did moment, what? I couldn't breathe right. Oh, tapes. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Sure Alice? enough, Alice's name is on there. More and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's... Do you mean with you? No. I feel like it just skipped there. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you. Looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But... You don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems. Always going on about something else. I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose him. And we're not even talking anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here. Even when he's home. Please help me, doctor. Because I'm at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Oh my gosh, he's right. That, that phone call that we received a few episodes ago, we were walking toward that rail yard. And Alice called us, and one of the things she said was, I look at you and it's not you, it's, it's somebody wearing your skin or something like that. That's exactly what she just said. So Dr. Hartman was talking with Alice on the phone, and Alice was trying to get Alan to come here, finally managed to get him to come here, and then all of a sudden Alice disappears. So you, you, we now know Hartman's, yeah, now we definitely know, Hartman has been behind this the whole time. I don't know if he kidnapped Alice or not. In fact, I'm pretty sure he didn't because the kidnapper before he died said that uh, he had no idea where Alice was. But for whatever reason, Hartman has just been playing games with me. The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing what? outside the lodge. What in the I world could the have been his Hartman. motivation? He I don't understand. Kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. He wants... The kidnapper wanted me to bring him the manuscript. It's like Hartman wants, wants my writing. And that's it. Seemed like a very I'm evil you motivation. I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to split. Is that Barry? Seriously, do you have any idea how much trouble you're in? I am famous. <laughs> I that's Barry. <laughs> Oh, what is Barry doing here? All right, let's let's get in the office. Barry, Barry, what are you doing? Man, with the you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You well, thank you. Yeah, I mean no. The cops found me a Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. Well, that's good. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. <laughs> Speaking Old of Barry. asses, that fed gave me a real hard time, but I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. 
he is. Go, and then really I is. Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here and I should come pick you up. But when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's, what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose <laughs> after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Sweet yeah, revenge. That's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal. We got to get going. Oh, Barry, you're such a character. All right, let's go into Hartman's office. Oh. His gun. These were all the pages I had on me. And his manuscript. Ooh. So Hartman does want his manuscript. Why, though? Alan, I mean, please. I made a joke earlier we'll about him back. selling so works of art, but maybe that is this. actually the case. Ah, uh, well. Worth a shot. Oh, he's really fessing up to break. it. Come on, let's work together on this. You have no idea. Hartman, what... shut up, Barry. Get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. You should have let him oh, talk for a Al, minute more. Let's just go. Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. Oh, I think the darkness has come for you, Alan. Well, Hartman screwed. <laughs> oh, that cocky little grin. Oh, Alan. Oh, gosh. Okay, guys. That is all the time we have for today's episode. This has been a blast so far, this episode. I am really enjoying this one. Um, the crazy uh, start to it alone, waking up in a mental hospital. Uh, that is one heck of a way to start the episode. Um, obviously, Hartman caught us when we uh, fell down into the lake and brought us here. I think that is definitely what happened, but man, we have discovered quite a few little tidbits of information, and hopefully we will be continuing to discover more of what's going on um, as this in-game episode progresses, but we've already got so many little tidbits of information, um, and hopefully the the storyline will just keep on stacking up and we'll be able to keep inserting all our missing bricks of information into this uh, storyline. But the only way we are going to discover that is by continuing to play. So if you are at all new to my channel, I highly recommend that you subscribe so that you can be there for uh, new episodes as they come out. And we can discover this storyline together. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button down there too. And just let me know that you supported the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see all of you in the next video.